So I guess this is a good time to start making a video. Uh, I have in this boat a bilge pump. That's it right down there, that white thing. It has a hose on it that runs out to a place right here where it will pump water out if you flip a button over there on the dash. The problem with that is I tend to leave this boat in the water and if I'm not there to flip the button, rainwater will come into it and it it may not this boat may have enough flotation stuff in it so that it wouldn't sink but it will sink enough to flood this area back here and recently i had a nice battery like this one sitting back here that got underwater stayed underwater for a few days and i guess that washed all the acid out of it so that by the time i got the water pumped out of it it was no longer any good in order to, to prevent that, I've ordered uh, this little auto bilge pump hickey right here. And the way this works is there's a float inside of the bottom of this thing. And when the water rises up, this thing starts pumping. So in order for this to work, I need for this to be kind of down in the bottom of the boat and anchored so that it doesn't joggle around or float or anything like that. So what I've come up with is a, uh, I've got this piece of metal that I used for another project at another time. And I'm thinking that if I cut this here and maybe over this way, that I can, you notice this has little holes in the bottom, little screw holes, so I can attach this pump to that and I can bolt put screws through this and sit this down in the back of there and attach this to the side and that will in effect attach this pump down in there where I want it to be. Now the problem I'm going to have after that is getting this big old holes up and out of there and I don't want to drill any holes in the boat so it's probably going to run up and over the side of the boat over there and head out the underway and I've got a little clamp like this that I can put on that and it's not going to be pretty, but it will work. So what I'm going to do next is get my little grinder out. I'm going to cut this. And because it's going to go up over, I'm going to leave the existing bilge pump in there. And the pump should sit right down under, right in there. And I'm going to bolt that piece of metal against the wall here. But I want to leave this other bilge pump hose here as a backup in case this first one fails and I ever need it. Um, so I'll wind up cutting this metal kind of up this way in order to clear a space for that hose that's down there. So I guess the next thing for me to do is to get over here on my trusty Rusty Acres vise and put my little piece of tin. I'm not just sitting y'all on top of my Eric Polson gloves. Eric got me some gloves while he was here. I'm sit y'all on top of that. I can set this over here and I can cut this like right there and maybe up this way and then we can we can move onward with our project sort of from there. That's an interesting piece of driftwood and I'm not even sure how I came to be in my possession here but it is. And I probably ought to put it somewhere besides over here in amongst all this metal stuff. So I think for now I'm going to set it right out here. Out of the way before the, yeah. I sit it out there with my pelican or swan or whatever that is. Flamingo. I put it out there with my flamingo, which was also a gift. I think Big Daddy might have sent me that, but it might have been somebody else. I never know because I can't remember stuff that good. So, keep a little grinder and some gloves and maybe some safety glasses. By the way, Eric brought me some new safety glasses. Let me get some boogers out. Show them to you. He brought me these bifocal safety glasses. And you know, I can see really good down here. I asked him what, you know, the number was and he said like 300 and the ones I'm using over there are like 150. So I think my eyes are getting worse. I probably need some better glasses, glasses, but he wears his, he got to where he was wearing his bifocal safety glasses all the time. And I'm thinking, well, that wouldn't be a bad idea, you know, to 
keep your old eyeballs safe and not wind up getting into a big mess like Josh did with his. So, let's see. So under here, and of course it's got the wrong blade on it. It's a kind of a general rule of thumb that very often that's what you find is that you're going to have the wrong blade on the ground. I need to do a little uh, organizing in my garage and I would like to uh, sort of get things prepared so that I can get back to working on that Chevy motor that's sitting over there on the end. So, but, I don't know, I haven't quite gotten there yet. I know I will, but not today. Today I'm going to do this. I find that if I focus on doing this and not get distracted by that thing and the other thing, then I'm more likely to get something done and if I try to focus on doing everything all at the same time, that generally don't work so well. So, put this on here, there, and we'll uh, make our cut. These uh, safety glasses he gave me has a little thing that kind of goes around your neck and holds them on your head and it's got a string that sort of runs down the back of my neck and it tickles my neck. <laughs> Not the kind of tickle that makes you want to laugh, it's the kind of tickle that makes you think you've got a butt crawl around your neck. Uh, which is a little bit annoying-ish. But we can live with it. And we could change it if we had to. Right, let me get some gloves next. I think these ones here will do. The ones with the hole in the finger. I think that might do it. We'll walk over here and kind of do a little test fit. Might be able to sit y'all side of the boat. Uh, that sounds like a saw blade. I can make music of that. So I'm going to sit you here and point you down that way so you can see where I'm going with this. So this will go down in here. bolt up in here and that pump will sit out here where my hand is and that should work just fine so the next thing to do is to uh, take the bottom of the pump it's removable to take it off and put some little tiny tech screws through the bottom of it into this piece of tin. I'm going to pull this big hose off of here while I work on this just because it is a big old piece of hose and it's kind of it kind of gets in the way of things when you're trying to work with something like this. So this will fit on top of that and that leaves enough room in the back for me to work this little button which helps you to determine whether or not the pump is working some kind of a test button once you get that hooked up and yeah i believe that'll work just fine so this actually comes off this part down here if you push these two little side buttons see this part comes off this is the part with the float in it that actuates that pump so i should be able to take me some little screws and zip 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 little I've got some small little uh, self tapping screws and then I'll come up under and I'll cut the bottoms off that hangs down so that it won't work on poking a hole in the bottom of the boat and then I can shoot screws into this side piece 
which is not underwater. So if I put a hole in that to attach this to that, it's not going to cause the boat to sink or anything weird like that. I'll set this over in here. Because I think this would work better if it was... Yeah. See, if I locate this out toward the edge of that, I think that would work better. So... I'm going to go around the house there and get me some little tech screws and I'll be right back. Now I'm going to go and cut each one of these little pieces off under here. Lovely, just lovely. Now let's uh, let's try sitting that on there, sitting it over in there, and taking a look at how it fits. So this is going to go on here like this, upside down. This bit here will run to the battery. I will put it on where you can be looking down into there. And this will go down in here like this. Put a screw in like here and over here. Uh, I may just go ahead and go get me a couple of little screws and put them in place there. I'm using these very small little self-tapping screws. They've got a sharpened end on here with a notch in it, and it will literally drill its own hole as you drill that in. Team that up with a screwdriver gun like the one I've got here in my hand. And oh, you get just amazing results. <clears throat> Sometimes that'll even sit in the end of your screwdriver gun, which makes it even easier. Lucky for me, this particular one does. If I can sling my body over and into here, hold that in place, and start that screw into there. So let's get a little screw in the other side, and then we'll see if we can get that big old hose connected to it. Uh, I got a big old hose here with a big old hose clamp and I'm gonna go find me uh, a socket. I find these big hose clamps like this work a lot better with a socket than they do with a screwdriver. And I've got uh, I've got some sockets right here. My safety glasses are fogging up and I can't see nothing. That's not a good combination. Actually, this works like a screwdriver gun fitting. Let's use that. Little 
think y'all are sort of almost tangled under the hose here. But the next challenge will be figuring out what to do with this hose. And I could legitimately run it like right out here. See, I have one of these little gizzy mows. Looks like this. And I could legitimately run that hose right out the back of here. That might be the least ugliest thing I could do. <laughs> yeah, I think it might be the least ugliest thing I could do. And I think I'll get me a screw and do that. I'll hold your horses and I'll be right back. Give me some of these little dancy washer things the other day when he was here. So I could literally put that and that like that and use this to put that. cut this little piece off back here uh, I don't think I want to do this because it would kink the hose so I think if I just let the water blow out of it and just like cut it off right about here I don't think it would be in the way of anything so, that's pretty easy to do and I think I don't think that'll hurt anything. I might bump into that a little bit, getting the gas tank in and out. I tell you what I could do too is I could hook this up and run some water over in there and watch it work. Hmm. Let me think about that before I make anything, any cuts or anything. Now this brown wire is a hot wire. It's got a plus right on there just to make sure you realize that it's a hot wire. I don't know why they make them brown instead of red, but I've got a, I've had some other pumps like electric fuel pumps. I've noticed a lot of times they'll use a brown wire too. I'm not sure why. Don't know if it matters, probably don't. It just is what it is. You know? I might take my solder and iron after I clamp this and solder it into place there pretty good. It doesn't slip out. <clears throat> See, that's actually made for a much bigger wire, so I think a little dab of solder on that would be very good. So I'll do the ground wire. Pretty much the same way. Now I'm pulling these wires kind of up to the side. I've got a little something I can run them through. I don't really want them laying on the bottom of the boat because I don't want a gas tank sitting on top of them. I don't want a hot wire under a gas tank, a metal gas tank in the bottom of a boat. Because all it takes about a spark to have a bad day with a boat gas tank. I got a friend that blew up in a boat when the gas tank ignited out on the lake and he lived through it but it uh, changed him changed his way of thinking about life I think so I'm pretty happy with my way of thinking about life right now I don't think I need that kind of attitude adjustment so I just as soon you know try not to myself through that kind of fun and all you know just saying I pretty much like my life the way it is I don't need it to be altered by a big explosion out on the lake somewhere especially like in his case he had other people on the boat and when the boat blew up created a very dangerous situation for everybody involved now I'm gonna go get my solder and solder and iron. 
heat it up and then solder that wire to that little piece right there. It's kind of ugly, but I think it's on there good. Okay, now I should be able to attach the appropriate wires in the appropriate places over here. And uh, and then test this by there's actually a test button on the side of it but I'd rather test it by putting a little water in the bottom of the boat and have it seeing it work in real life okay I've got the plug in the back of the boat I got a water hose run over in there I'm going to turn the water hose on and see how long it takes for that to start pumping Basically, we're just putting water right into the back of the boat. That's what we want it to do right there. That's a pretty healthy flow of water, too. I'm going to cut the water hose off. Now at this point, the pump is running, but it's not pumping any water out, which is not acceptable because in a situation like that, it could cut on and then not cut off. It may be because the pump isn't sitting flat on the floor the way I've got it placed. I might need to adjust that. I'm going to get over there and wiggle it around see if I can get it to stop. Now I might can take a piece like this and put it down on top of the far end of that and have that work to hold that thing down. That's how it works properly. There's one more thing I could do. I believe I could tilt it a bit more with the placement of one more of those little small screws to ensure that it sits flat on the bottom of the boat. I'm going to do that and then test it again. Put y'all on hold while I go find the screw. I'll be right back. Okay, I made some adjustments to how it's attached. So let's try it now.
So she cuts on, she cuts off, like she's supposed to. I think I can call that good. I do believe. Okay. I think that works. So just for show and tell, this is what I ordered. Auto bilge pump, fully automated bilge pump, 12 volt. Uh, 1100 GPH is just gallons per hour. I probably could have gone with a lot smaller one, which would have eliminated the need for that big hose. But it is what it is, and uh, I'm not changing it now. So y'all keep that in mind. If you've got a small boat like mine, you could probably get away with a much smaller pump than that. There's that.